Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of the Intellectual Saviors of Wrestling with your hosts, the Master of the Brain Damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H. And this is the Raw Review, the Fallout from Battleground. Yeah, so first off, we had the Raw Commissioner and General Manager out at ringside to discuss the fallout of battleground and how it would implicate on raw yeah and uh not much to our shock we got the introduction of the new title yeah not the one we were expecting <laughs> no and ah screw it you're probably gonna say it anyway but i don't like the name of it it's oh, pg it's shit <laughs> basically the main title that's going to be on Raw is the WWE Universal Champion. Now, I hate the term WWE Universe, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to hate this title unless it looks stunning. But knowing WWE's track record with the last four or five titles, I'm not expecting something miraculous. So, yeah, um... The crowning of the new champion is going to be on at SummerSlam. Yeah. We already know one participant who's going to be in it. It's going to be none other than the number one draft for Raw, Seth Rollins. Yep. And he would be facing the winner out of eight participants in a mini-tournament that would be happening on Raw yeah, that yeah. night. Yeah, two Fatal 4-Way matches. Yeah, uh, before the participants were announced, uh, Stephanie chucked a few digs at Roman, <laughs> basically saying Seth had the title in the bag until he screwed it up for yeah. Raw. <laughs> Poor Roman. Um, yeah. So, the participants in the uh, in the tournament to determine who would face Seth for the WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam would be between Roman Reigns, mm-hmm. Finn Balor, Ooh, different. Cesaro, yeah, good one. Rusev makes sense. And Sheamus was in there. Yep. And Sami Zayn. Yes. And Kevin Owens. On different Fatal 4 ways. <laughs> yes, yes, Strange. they would be on different ones. Um, yeah. We'll get round to the order of uh, their matches later on. And uh, it was also announced that Charlotte would be defending the women's title. Against Sasha Banks on Raw. Hmm. Yeah, she had. Uh, didn't really agree with this one. I think they should have saved it for SummerSlam, but. Well. We'll wait and see what happens in that match as we go through the results. So, first uh, one. Yeah, the first match of the night, we had the first Fatal 4 Way of the uh, WWE Universal Tournament. We had Cesaro facing off against Kevin Owens, Rusev, and the new recruit to Raw, Finn Balor. Yeah, this was an interesting one. Four guys who are really technically sound. It was a really good match. I mean, it was back and forth. I enjoyed it. There were times you didn't really know who was going to win it. You could make a case for any of them. Yeah. And uh, Cesaro was hitting him plenty of uh, very European uppercuts on everyone. But uh, no, towards the end, uh, Cesaro and Kevin Owens had been uh, knocked out of the ring and it was down to Finn Balor and Rusev. Yeah, really different. And then... uh, I suppose slightly to our surprise, maybe not so. Uh, Finn Balor hit the coup de grace on oh. on Rusev and picking up the victory. Christ, I mean, they got to give him a different finisher. Every time I hear coup de grace, I just cringe. He's called the demon, and your finisher is the coup de grace. 
fuck's sake. <laughs> right, next, 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 next. Yeah, uh, next match will be a women's match. We yes. had the debut of Nia Jax. Hmm. And she was uh, facing off against a local competitor, <laughs> Britt Baker. Never heard of her. No. <laughs> Well, to me, I thought Nia Jax had been brought up a bit too early. She's only been in NXT, what, nine months? Yeah, about and, that. And she's had a couple of good matches, but I don't think she was really ready for the main roster yet. But they've decided to go with her. Yeah, I mean, uh, what the match was, I thought it was an alright match. I mean, obviously, they're, they're putting her over as a big powerhouse and... Uh, She's someone who could uh, potentially dominate the uh, women's division with her size and her wrestling style. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, not to your surprise, Nia Jax picked up the uh, victory. She hit the she hit the leg drop mm. on her. And, uh, yeah, that was the end of that match. So, uh, good to see the leg drop coming back as a finisher. I mean, there's only one other famous leg drop in the business. Well, not currently in the business. <laughs> the immortal leg drop. Yeah. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what Nia Jax does in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, it could be a good match for whoever the women's champion is. Yeah. So and then uh, then after that, we had our second fatal four way match in the WWE Universal tournament. I thought that was the main event. No, 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 the main event was the final. Ah, right. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so we had Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn. Link it in there. Oh, no. Christ. <laughs> and Sheamus. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what to say about this one? But to be fair, straight away, as soon as you see the end, the participants come out, you thought straight away, right, this is a straight fight out between Roman and Sammy. Well, yeah, I mean, Jericho, it's only a matter of time before he buggers off again, and Sheamus, I don't think he's ever going to be a main eventer again. No. Short term, maybe, but nothing long term. No. So, uh, not to our surprise... Roman Reigns picked up the victory in this one. Yeah, I mean, I quite liked this match. I mean, Roman have got heavily booed out the building, but he did a good spot where he jumped over the top rope, taking out the other three. Yeah. But now he won with a spear. Can't remember. Was it Jericho he speared? Yeah, I think it might have been Jericho, yeah. I should know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Jericho he hit with the spear. Yeah. And then uh, confirming the main event for later on in the night would be Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor. Yeah, you see, on the whole battleground thing, I sort of predicted Roman versus Seth for whatever title they were bringing in. So, to see if it happens. Yeah. So, yeah. Then uh, the next one was a little bit random, but a nice little treat as well. We had the return of the man that gravity forgot, mm. Neville. Ah, yes. And he was uh, facing off against the, I suppose they're broken up now, the former member mm. of the social outcast, Curtis Axel. Yeah, it's good to see Neville back. I mean, I think he's forgotten what a razor is. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, very much going for the rugged look now. But as one of the only two English people currently in the company, I've got my full support behind him. This was a decent match. It's the first match back from his ankle injury. He doesn't seem to have lost any, any steps during his time away. No, and... Uh, <laughs> Well, as you'd probably expect, Neville picked up the victory with the red arrow. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good victory. Builds up some momentum for Neville. 
We'll wait and see what he does in the coming weeks on Raw. Yeah. And for Curtis Axel, it's back to not wrestling like a henny. (laughs) And then next, we had the New Day with the celebration party. (laughs) Oh, yeah. For for their longest reigning... They are they are now the longest reigning tag team champions, defeating Brian Kendrick and Paul London. Yes, that's the one. title reign. Yeah, I mean it's good that they've got it now. I mean I think they've deserved it. Yeah, it's been doing some amazing work, and uh, of course as well to tease the crowd, they brought out the bowl, the the. Uh, the cartons of bootios. Yeah. I think with, we, with the real cereal in it. Wasn't Kofi actually eating it? <laughs> he was. No, I don't know. I like the jokes they were in there. Cause they were making reference to the video package, saying that's a nice package that they had there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the adults got the joke. Yeah. They're always trying to uh, squeeze them into their segments to uh, get wise cracks from the adults. But they were interrupted by two very angry, bald men. Oh. No, not the Mitchell brothers. <laughs> no, of course, we're uh, talking about the former club members, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just got a beat down on all three members, and they sort of basically said, you know, party's over, boys. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, they're quite a hype tag team. Mm-hmm. They always tell us about how great they were in Japan. So it should be a good tag title match if that's where they're going with it. Yeah. yeah so we'll, uh, we'll wait and see if uh, this is inevitably a match that will be going down at SummerSlam. I would imagine so. So, yeah. Let's move on to the next part. Ah, yes, here we go. Then we had the WWE Women's Championship match where Charlotte would be defending her title finally against Sasha Banks yeah. after uh, all the loopholes she's had to uh, jump through just to get the opportunity. Of course, though, Charlotte wouldn't be coming out alone. <sighs> she would have her, uh, what she's calling her, a, a, a protege, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, she'd have Dana Brooke with her. As you're watching this, I expected this to get DQ'd or counted out or something, just to keep things going until SummerSlam. But no, I was completely shocked. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, I may be wrong, but I think they even got a decent amount of time for this match yeah. as well. It definitely seemed to go on longer than what... Uh, Normal average uh, women's match goes on for, and it was actually quite a decent match. Yeah, uh, as you would come to expect, Dana eventually ends up getting involved, but then, unfortunately for her and Charlotte, she got caught by the ref. Yeah, indeed, done the famous you, out of here. Yeah, <laughs> and then there was the classic wave from Sasha Blanks on the floor. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. No, I really enjoyed this match. I mean, Charlotte did a pretty good moonsault off the top rope. Yeah, although it did look a bit nasty at the same time, it has to be said. It's a difficult one to pull off. Yeah, especially going from the top rope to the to the outside of the ring. Because, you know, Shawn Michaels used to do that quite a lot, and even he missed it a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, well, we had it where... Uh, Sasha hit the, I believe it was the backstabber on uh, on Charlotte, and then she went to go for the pin, and uh, we got a narrow fall, and then I believe it was then Charlotte started taunting her and saying, oh, you'll, yeah. you'll never beat me, you will never ever beat me, <laughs> and then Sasha just went into a rage, I think she hit her with another a backstabber, and then she put her in the bank state. Yep, and after a lengthy title reign, Charlotte has finally lost the title. Yep, and the whole crowd erupted. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the loudest I've heard a women's match get cheered for since... Hmm. 
Oh, when can we say? Who is the last real women's title reign? I can't even remember that far. Should we just go out on a leg and say probably... Trish and Lita headlined Raw that one time. Mm, possibly. Well, their last match at Unforgiven, Trish's retirement match. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is that. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's definitely been a long time coming for Sasha. And, uh, yeah, we'll wait and see whether, uh, whether Charlotte will uh, revoke her rematch. You, you would think she would. But I hope that now that she's lost the title, they go and go back to what worked, look at some NXT matches and go, okay. And, and just do it right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Although, as much as I did enjoy it, I really enjoy watching Sasha as a heel. Yes. But the thing is, hmm, come to think about it, she may eventually go back to being a heel if they bring up Bailey. Yeah, 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 possibly. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Well, well, I think it'll basically come down to uh, Triple H beg- begrudgingly letting Bailey get called up. Nah, it won't be his choice, will it? I mean, Vince has yeah. the high power if he says he wants her. Mm, yeah, yeah, there is that. So, yeah. That was that, and then, uh, nah, screw it. Then we had our quick toilet break after all the excitement. Wow, this was the toilet break. <laughs> we had a local competitor going by the name of James Ellsworth yeah. in, in the ring, and he was, um, I believe he was being interviewed by uh, Tom Phillips. Yep. And then... <laughs> Much to his uh, disgust or shock, Braun Strowman's music hit. <laughs> God, yeah, Braun Strowman with his new haircut. No sheep mask. Nope. Which is a bit strange. <laughs> and the guy, Tom Phillips, said, What are you thinking, fighting this guy? <laughs> it's safe to say he got his ass handed to him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but there's not a lot we can say. It was all Strowman. And it was very quick. Yeah. So yeah, and that's how that one ended up. And then, uh, and then after that, we got treated to Enzo and Big Cass. Yeah, another glorious promo from Enzo. <laughs> Just knocking him out of the park at the moment. Yeah, I think, well, Rollie's on and that. I think he's quickly going down as one of the best guys on the mic to have been in the company. Yeah. <laughs> He keeps it up, and they keep getting popular. So yeah, um, bit of a random pairing from this uh, in this one though. They were facing off against the Shining Stars. <laughs> yeah, they interrupted and they did a quick promo about how Puerto Rico is so great. Yeah, um, I, I don't know about you, but I'm really confused about this team of uh, Primo and Epico. <laughs> Yeah, you see, they are a really good team, but I mean, WWE just haven't given them the right gimmick. Yeah. yeah I so, mean, they were tag team champions once. Yeah, when uh, when it was the original team of uh, Epico and Primo. Hmm. When they had Rosa Mendez as their manager. Hmm. And uh, before they uh, before they disappeared and came back as a. Uh, Diego. No, no, the official story is they were kidnapped by Los Matadores. Oh, okay, they, they were kidnapped. And they were locked up somewhere in Spain. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, it was a decent match, but uh, in the end, Big Cass and Enzo picked up the victory. Yeah, I think didn't someone interfere in this match? Yes, yes, that was it. The Golden Truth, who all night had been looking for Pokemon. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, they uh, they caused a bit of a distraction when uh, our truth basically ran through the ring whilst trying to catch a Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rather, all night they had been looking for it. And they just randomly wandered straight through the match. 
Yeah, and then uh, that caused the distraction, and then Big Cass hit the big boot of Primo. <laughs> and yeah, he pinned him straight after that. So yeah. And then it was main event time. Oof. Finn Balor versus Roman Reigns. Yeah. The number one, well, I wouldn't say number one contender. To go and meet Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that. So, yeah. It was really good high-paced match. Uh, I mean, obviously, everyone naturally had in the back of their head Roman's going to pull this out of the bag somehow. You know... Watching it, it was at the back of my mind that, yeah, he was probably going to win. But during it, I, I said to whoever I was watching it with, Roman just doesn't look interested. No. And he, he really didn't. No, there was a, there was quite a few good spots in this. Obviously, naturally, uh, Seth was watching backstage to uh, see who he'd be facing. Hmm. Yeah, we... Uh, we saw a few Superman punches in this match, yeah. and uh, a few spears. And there was a few high flying moves from uh, Finn Balor. Yeah, he really got a lot. Of, this match had a lot of time, and Finn showcased a lot. I think Finn had more offense than Roman. Yeah. But yeah, uh, as the match progressed, and that, and um, hey. Slightly to the shock, but uh, happiness of the crowd. Um, Finn Balor picked up the victory. Yes. He pinned Roman clean. One, two, three. In the middle of the ring. Which I believe is Roman's third clean loss in less than a month. Yeah. So, uh, on top of him picking up the victory and uh, going on to SummerSlam. It was also a great way to celebrate his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. So yeah, that would be Raw's main event match at SummerSlam. Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins for the WWE Universal Championship. You know, if they give him enough time, that match could potentially steal the show. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, uh, well, everyone knows what Seth can do and ooh, Finn Balor can more than more than uh, well enough keep up with him on yeah. that one. So that I'd one. say he could arguably do with a new finisher, but uh, yes. apart from that, though, they've got very similar styles of wrestling as well, so yeah. it'd be very interesting to see who comes out on top at SummerSlam. Yeah, I'll be really looking forward to that. If they build it right, give it the proper amount of time it deserves. Just say, here's 25 minutes, just go... Just go and knock it out of the park. Yeah. And then we, we'll be in for a classic. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, no, uh, the crisis worsens for Roman Reigns. Where does he go from here? Yeah, I mean, a few people backstage are all like saying, you know, it's part of his punishment for his, uh, his failed test. It's got to be. I mean... He went on such a run, beating so many people with all those Cena comebacks. Mm. And now he's lost clean three times in less than a month. Yeah. They've... And where do they go next for him? He's not in the title match. What's he going to be doing? No, no. That's a very good question. No. So, uh be interesting to see what, they, uh, what happens with Roman in the next few weeks. Will he even have a match at some point? That's a good question. Hopefully answered on the next week's Raw. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just briefly, uh, we, we'd uh, later find out as well that uh, it's been confirmed next week on Raw, the Beast Incarnate is going to be in the house. <laughs> oh, dear. Someone's going to get f 5 Yep. Watch out, Raw roster. <laughs> and f 5s is coming your way. Oh, dear. Hopefully f 5s Corey Graves. Sheesh. Well, then again, probably not. He'd probably break him in half. Well, hopefully this time he doesn't he doesn't lose his shoe like Michael Cole did. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you watch that, just go on YouTube, type in Brock Lesnar F5 Michael Cole. 
Yeah. And just laugh because just as he's picking him up, you just hear Michael Cole going, Brock, I've done it, it's wrong. Ah. <laughs> it's just a shoe in the middle of the ring. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah. No, I think that about wraps it up. Yeah. Uh, I think only possibly a little, little bit of information to keep you informed of that we haven't told you so far is uh, Raw. Raw's got a new logo, new mm. theme song, and uh, the announcer table has moved back up to the top of the Titan Tron. That still won't stop it being blown up. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No. They'll find a way somehow. Yeah. They did back then. Yep. Maybe Kevin Owens will powerbomb a few people through it instead of the big light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that poor big light. It was always getting blown up. <laughs> so, yeah. That about wraps it up. Yeah. From your hosts, the master of the brain damage. I've been Martin. And the one and only Sam H. We will see you on the next one for the SmackDown review. See you later.